Hello, good morning and welcome to the AM Sports with me, Oreko Ampofo. We do start off uh, from the latest in African football, where the playoff round of the 2021-2022 CAF Champions League was completed this weekend. And unsurprisingly, a part of Africa will dominate the next round. That's the group stages. Now, out of the 16 teams that have advanced to the money zone, a whooping 10 of which are from the north. And uh, Guinean champions, Horoya AC, are said to be in West Africa's, uh, they're going to be West Africa's only representative. And uh, you can see the team list on your screens at the moment. And uh, our Ahli, they of course have been very dominant in this part of uh, the world. Uh, winning the CAF Champions League, they'll be the defending champions. And then Zamalek FC are there as well, Esperance Tunis. And then Atual Sahel. We also have teams such as Redad who beat Hard to Folk all in the mix. And then oh, you also have a team from South Africa, that's Mamelo di Sundowns. alongside other teams for the Champions League draw. But we're keeping you up to date uh, in terms of how the competition pans out and how the group stages do come out. But remember, Heart of Folk have been relegated to the Confederations Cup and that draw also takes place later today. Uh, let's come back to Ghana football, where head coach of Real Tamil United, Shaibu Ibrahim Tanko, uh, says that his side is focused on finishing at the top four as they make a return to the Ghana Premier League, out to you beat a select Magdan 11 side 1 0 in a special cup match uh, to mark the Damba Festival of the Kingdom of Dagbon in Yindi in the northern region. My colleague Nathaniel Wato was at the event and put together this special report. Yeah, basically, um, our, our, our thinking is that uh, we need to be within the top four. And for that matter, we need real support from our board members in order that we we'll achieve that, I mean, a fit. Okay, thank you very much, Coach. And I'll take the final word from uh, the captain of the side who led uh, very, very well today for uh, this victory and this special trophy, which will go into their cabinet uh, before we start off uh, the Ghana Premier League season 2021 and 2022. How are you doing? Congratulations again. Thank you, sir. Mm. Now, um, I'd, like, I'd like to know, I mean, what have you guys been discussing, you and your teammates, uh, basically, uh, now that this promotion was secured and now that, you know, you know very well that now you're bringing Ghana Premier League action to this side of the country for the first time in a long time? Oh, thank you very much for the question. Uh, myself and my teammates, we have been discussing, we have been working hard mm -hmm. uh, to stay in the top four, as our coach said earlier on. Okay. So that has been our our main... So the main idea into going uh, into the coming season is that you know you're going to stay in the top four yes sir. okay great but b before we before we also go l tell me about the other clubs and who you think will pose the biggest challenge to rtu and the ambitions to be in the top four and stay there i don't think any club can give us any tough time i don't think you don't think so yes <laughs> Let's do some more stories and this time talk about the Ghana League and uh, focus on the Division 1 League as head coach of Sky FC, Abdul Malik Mohamed. He's expressed his delight at winning the maiden edition of the Division 1 League Super Cup and also believes it will be a stepping stone for his side to help them gain promotion to the Premier League next season. Sky FC were crown champions after beating Tema Youth 7-6 on penalties at the Medina Ashtetev over the weekend. I feel very, very elated, I'm very, very happy. You know what? Uh, tomorrow is going to be my birthday, and the boys have given me a very big present, which I'm very happy with. And I mean, no, I haven't informed them. It will have been a different in here. But they themselves, 
winning these trophies, I mean, serves as a motivator to them. So I will go back home and then continue with the rest of the jubilation. Sincerely speaking, it's one thing that I believe most is going to motivate the boys to even perform beyond what they did here. Because all along when we were coming, what they were saying was, look, we need to win this trophy so that we can tell ourselves, look, we are there. This season, we are making it to the Premiership. They themselves know it. And that's the word, I'm only, the only thing I've been using to motivate them. Even this afternoon, I told them, look, we promise ourselves that we are going to win this trophy. Winning this trophy clears the way for us to the Division 1. At least to reach our destination, that's the Premiership. So we are coming here this afternoon by who or group we have to win the trophy. And by hook or crook, they did win that trophy on penalties against Tenor Youth, but still on the Division 1 League Super Cup. Uh, the following competition, uh, that's the maiden one of the tournament, where Sky beat uh, Tenor Youth in the final. Now, Vice Chairman of the local organising committee, Terry Idem, uh, he has commended the level of competition and indicated that next year's tournament will even be bigger. Overall sale is good, but there's more room for improvement. It has been a challenge mainly because of finance. And another main challenge was getting venue to play this tournament. I mean, we virtually at the 11th hour had to accept here because out of all the lot, this was the best in terms of where we want to do it, in terms of finance and things. So we say, yes, it's a novice. We've started. And next year, we hope to improve it better. Going by what we just saw, hey, next year is going to be a notch higher because Sky has shown the way, the Mayuf has shown the way. People will not just come and use it as a pre-season, they will take it as a, a ritual tournament. And we may look at moving it from one regional centre to the other. So next year, there is, there is a big future for it. Well, to some more stories, uh, the Queen of England, Baton Ville, arrived in Ghana on Monday at the Kotoka International Airport. It is an event held to precede the next Commonwealth Games, which takes place in 2022 in UK. Now, Joy Sports, Harun Mubarak, was at the event and report. The Queen's Baton Relay, which started on October 7 from the Queen of England, has gone through Cyprus, Malta, Nigeria, Gambia, Sierra Leone, and earlier on Monday, it landed in Ghana. The baton, which was in Sierra Leone last week, was brought to the members of the Planning Committee and the Ghana Olympic Committee, led by President Benun Mensah, by Sierra Leonean Ali Koroma. My president, Dr. Patrick Oka, who is president of, of the Commonwealth Games, Association of Sierra Leone. He has sent me with the good old messages alongside with the baton itself. What you have heard from the president, I don't need to repeat it again. Okay, just that the beauty of the Commonwealth and the spirit of the game is going to be exercised here. Um, what Ghana, what the, the Ghanaian um, people here would need to know is the fact that um, we are Commonwealth countries. The baton um, visited us and we were able to celebrate it in Sierra Leone, in two cities, however. And now I'm hearing you, uh, it's, you, it's going to be celebrated here in two or more cities, which means then, therefore, you have better plans. In the evening, the president, Nana Adodankwa Akufuado, received the baton brought to him by the president of the Ghana Olympic Committee, Benuni Mensa, the planning committee, together with the sports minister, Mustafa Yusuf. On Wednesday, the baton will be moved to Kumasi at the Menshia Palace to be received by Otumfo Osei Tutu II. An official from Ghana will send the baton to Cameroon, its next destination. The Commonwealth Games will be held from July 28 to August 8, with over 4,000 athletes expected to be in attendance. Let's do some basketball now, where president of the Ghana Basketball Association, David Ashong, has lauded the University of Ghana Sports Directorate for their efforts and achievements at developing the game in the country. Uh, the UG Gorillas went on a five-year unbeaten run between 2016 and 2020, winning titles on the local and continental level in the process. And the president believes the university's recent successes draw inspiration from historical precedent. Joy Sports' Michel Equino has more in the following report. Following the UG Guerrilla's dominance, stretching a period of five years, 
they have earned plodders and also drawn envious eyes in other tertiary institutions. The team's dominance was extended to Africa by being crowned back-to-back -back fastest champions in 2017 and 2018, setting them apart in the country. This follows a period where basketball in the institution hit a low, and president of the Ghana Basketball Association, David Ashong, is happy the team has found touch with its historical strength. I was playing in Lagos. We were the champions. We became national champions of one of the years. So, no, I think there's been a strong tradition of basketball in Lagos. And um, it's, it's, it's been built on over the years. Um, I cannot account for what happened after I left, but I do know that um, there's always been interest in basketball. Those days basketball was we gone tech. Yeah. That was a rivalry. Those days there were three universities anyway. And um, the percentage of those two and in during my period certainly was Lagon. Different periods was tech. But there's been a strong tradition of basketball in, 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 in Lagon. It's been a very popular sport there. And I think I remember uh, our the sports administrators at the time paid a lot of attention to basketball. Right? I, I get the sense that this has continued. And there's been a winning tradition, a winning mentality, which has been engendered over the years. And that's why the gun has, has, has continued to go from strength. It's, it's, it's a lot of it's mental, it's cultural. And the gun has attracted good basketball and built on the sport. David Ashon confesses that the difficulties to extend basketball onto the national stage via a national team is due to a gap created by the inadequate support from the state. It's not been easy. Um, the activity you see has been from the sacrifices of people who love basketball and they have organized at their own level and tried to get this thing going. As an association, what have we been able to do? We have focused on providing technical support and training. We've done a lot of training for coaches, referees, etc., etc. Under the auspices of FIBA, we've channeled those resources, trying to make sure that um, the support that FIBA gives us is distributed evenly. I mean, our technical director has run coaches' clinics across the country, has run, done a lot of training. Th those are the basic things you need for basketball to prosper. You can't have a basketball match without a referee who knows what he's doing, mm -hmm. and there's not a lot of them around. So I think we'll be very successful in that. In terms of the more traditional uh, measures, traveling abroad to go and play games, etc., etc., we've done a few more at the junior level, not the senior national team. Um, we've been to Mozambique, we've been to one or two places, we've gone to Togo, Ivory Coast, etc., from our own resources sponsored these teams. MTN did support us at some point and um, I think there was another telephone company, Vodafone, gave us some money for one of the trips. So those two telephone companies have both done um, support, given support for some trips, two trips. The others, our own sacrifices we've been able to go. And these bas people love basketball so much that they actually are prepared to go, no per diem, no nothing, they go just for the sake of support, participating. That's true love of sport. With Congress for the Association first approaching, Team Van Es, led by Atul Van Es, have promised to set running the long-awaited basketball league. Stick with Joy Sports as we bring you up to speed with all details, events and exclusive interviews with candidates ahead of Congress. Well, that was Michelle Yukweno, and as he said, uh, we'll be bringing you exclusive interviews with the aspirants uh, for the presidency of the Ghana Basketball Association. But that's how we wrap up the sports here. You can get some more sports stories on my joy online for slash sports. And you can see the latest from CAF being that teams can now invite up to 28 players for the 2021 African Cup of Nations. Initially, it was 23, but it's been extended by five players. That's if you want to, uh, because of the COVID-19 pandemic, which is still around. Well, my name is Eric Wampofo, and the AM show continues right after this.